Hello, and thank you for joining me today for my keynote on AI and healthcare. My name is Sinisha Nikolic, and I am the director of HPC and AI for Asia Pacific Lenovo. Artificial intelligence or AI and related technologies are increasingly prevalent in business across society as a whole. And as we'll see today, we are beginning to see this being applied to healthcare. These technologies have the potential to transform many aspects of patient care, as well as administrative processes within provider, payer, and even pharmaceutical organizations. There are multiple research studies suggesting that AI can perform as well as, or even better than humans at key healthcare tasks, such as diagnosing diseases. Today, algorithms are already outperforming radiologists at spotting malignant tumors, as an example. But let's not be scared of a post-apocalyptic Terminator type scenario just yet, as it's clear, at least to me, that AI systems will not replace human clinicians on any large scale, but will rather augment their efforts to care for patients. What AI offers then is the ability to automate many aspects of care. Artificial intelligence is not just one technology, however, but rather it's a collection of them. Most of these technologies today have immediate relevance to healthcare, but the specific processes and tasks they support vary widely. So, you know, what are some of these technologies? And I'm sure you've heard quite a few of them already. The first one I'd like to talk about is really machine learning. Machine learning is a statistical technique which trains specific models with focused data. Machine learning is just one of the most common forms of AI and is a broad technique at the heart of many approaches. And there are many versions of it. In healthcare, as an example, the most common application of this traditional machine learning is called precision medicine, which is the prediction of which treatment protocols are likely to succeed based on a learned knowledge and that learned knowledge is based on prior patients' data, on which type of tumor or which type of disease they may have, um, as well as their gender, ethnicity, uh, et cetera, age group. So simply, it takes this learned database of knowledge and applies rules. So as an example, it could be a type of drug used um, with patient A, who was a certain age, a time before, and it had success or it didn't have success. And based on that, there are probabilities that you as an individual, which may fit that criteria, would either respond to that or not. And that's effectively what this type of machine learning can do. But what it really does is imagine if you will, uh, you're a doctor and you need to go through prior documentation any number of volumes of, re of, of reference material. Now that takes a lot of time to be able to pinpoint certain diagnostic or pathologies of certain diseases to formulate a treatment. Now imagine if you will, a machine can actually help you, um, I, I guess, limit those down to those techniques that would have a better uh, outcome for your patient. That saves you as a doctor um, or you as a clinician enormous amounts of time uh, of reading etc and your ability then increases to go and talk to other patients or your ability to help other patients. So that being said <clears throat> an even more complex form of machine learning involves deep learning or DL. No, machine learning ML, deep learning DL. Um, and DL uses things like a neural network model, which has many additional complexities, many different features or variables that can predict these outcomes. There may be thousands of hidden features in these models, which only today can be exploited or even uncovered because we can use these ultra fast GPU processes, thereby lowering the cost of compute and increasing speed. 
A very common application of deep learning in healthcare um, really involves visual recognition of potential cancers from imagery. So things like uh, things from MRIs, CAT scans, etc. This vision-based deep learning is most commonly found in oncology, um, image analysis, and promises a, a great deal of increased accuracy for the clinician. You know, in fact, in 2017, Lenovo Research won a grand challenge competition focused on the development of an automatic segmentation algorithm for liver lesions. So it looked for, um, it looked for cross sections through a liver and looking for tumors. So it did this how? It did tumor detection and classification. So using deep learning and some very specific algorithms developed by Lenovo Research, eHealth as it was called, analyzed these CT images of patients to detect these tumors. If the tumors actually existed, it was able to provide lots of information on them, such as their size, location, and potentially the type of tumor it was, which could assist doctors in the diagnosis. It would annotate these images. So eHealth would actually integrate the, the, the basic information that it had of those CT images and the patients and annotate location, uh, the status of the tumor, its growth rates, etc., which made it much easier for doctors to read those CT images. And it would also produce these 3D model displays and it, was in, and it would integrate all of that information with these 3D models. And it would display this 3D tumor model um, and it would make it rather more simplified at least for doctors and patients to communicate with each other about the diagnosis, the treatment course, uh, and, and how that tumor was progressing as you actually went in for additional CAT scans and MRIs throughout the process. So incredible stuff that we've been involved with personally. And I'm aware of a number of startups who focus specifically on the diagnosis and treatment recommendations for certain cancers based on their genetic profiles. Since many cancers have a genetic basis, human clinicians have found it increasingly complex to understand all the variants of cancer and their response to drugs now and future and the protocols to, um, to, to treat them. And AI is absolutely needed to wade through these rivers of data, these rivers of gene you know, genomic information of the cancers themselves. In fact, as I mentioned previously, this data is so critical for deep learning that it's required to make those predictions and make those treatment courses. Lives are at risk. So speed, efficiency, and accuracy becomes paramount to how you attack that data and derive information from data. Technology firms such as Lenovo are working really close with research institutions, hospitals, healthcare startups across both hardware and software technologies. We're working tirelessly across the IT spectrum to both increase time to diagnosis, or decrease time to diagnosis, I should say, as well as lower costs to address these types of challenges. Let me give you another example. Lenovo and Intel have developed a technology suite for the processing of genomics data called GHOST. And I mentioned genomics data just previously as it related to cancer, uh, the, the cancer genome. When the first human genome was sequenced in 2007, it cost over a million dollars. And since then, the price has plummeted to below a thousand dollars per sequence. The main driver for this data production is really caused by the higher throughput of these new sequences, these instruments. We have now, you know, we are now sequencing um, six terabytes of data within roughly 24 hours. And that equates to about 30, or sorry, 60 human genomes, not 30. 30 times two, you'll get 60. So 60 human genomes across one run, generating a whole lot of data and a huge amount of storage to go through. And this is where Ghost came from. The technologies available prior to Ghost allowed those systems to take 40 
to 150 hours for a single sample. And that's one person would take 40 to 150 hours, dependent upon how you actually process that data. This is just not scalable. It's not efficient. You can't actually deal with multiple patients across the, you know, across the city, across the world, if you're a clinician. You just can't deal with it. But Ghost has allowed, with Intel's help uh, and Lenovo Research, to be able to put together an optimized hardware and software platform that took that 40 to 150 hours down to less than an hour. How much more work can you get done with a patient when you have that many hours left in a day that you haven't spent waiting for data? That's a key benefit of these types of technologies today and the net impact into healthcare. But you know what? That's from a clinical standpoint. AI is used all over um, hospitals, all over healthcare today. And it's somewhat less revolutionary, shall I say, or exciting when it's applied to administration. But it's hugely important as it can provide substantial efficiencies across administrative functions. Imagine, if you will, your ability to automate processes such as patient, uh, patient input or uh, uh, patient administration, etc. We know that in the UK, in the last survey done, that 30% of a nurse's time alone is spent on administrative function, regulatory work, that type of activities keeping them away from critical patient care. But there's other AIs that we can use as well as it relates to administrative work. And it's not just what I spoke about, visual, um, uh, neural networks, etc. We have things today called RPAs, yet another term for you to know. So robotic process automation. So this will help you automate IT processes, business processes, at some level of scale, where you're using software bots or bots to work through um, administration tasks, etc. So imagine as well, you have these bots which can act on levels of AI insights to complete tasks across claims processing, across clinical documentation, the revenue cycle in a hospital, management of that, and even records management or medical records management. You know, some healthcare organizations are experimenting with chatbots today, as an example, that are related to patient interaction. You know, mental health, mental wellness, telehealth. These NLP or national language processing, yet another term, applications will be useful for simple transactions, such as refilling prescriptions, or even making appointments. So look, in summary, it's proven to me and hopefully to you that AI has a very important role to play in healthcare. Now and in the future, we'll see this as a primary capability with hospitals, with healthcare, with pharmaceutical organizations. So right now, we know that this visual work you know, there, there may be blips in the system where it doesn't get it always accurate, and this is why human beings involved. But we know that AI will eventually prevail. The more data you give to an AI system to learn, the better it becomes. And given the rapid advances in AI for imaging analysis, it seems incredibly likely to me that most radiology and pathology images will be examined by a machine at some point in the future. Speech and text recognition are already employed for tasks like patient communication and the capture of clinical notes. And their, you know, their usage will only increase. But let me leave this with you. In all aspects of healthcare, you will always need human to human contact and human to human interaction. Humans have empathy. Humans have sympathy. Machines at this point just don't have it. And I don't think it'll ever change. Humans just need humans. AI will eventually 
Help us be better, be stronger, and healthier. And that's the net benefit that we get out of technology and the performance gains that we have seen over the last number of years. I'm Sunisha. I hope you've enjoyed the talk today, and I hope you have a great rest of the day and great event. Thank you very much. Meet the critical unknowns, the unseen IT experts helping doctors detect disease with our AI and high-performance computing.